Hey, what's going on? This is Rip City Drive, the YouTube show. Chad doing here. Uh, we got the Rip City Drive coming up at 3 o'clock. It's going to go from 3 until 4.30 today. And then I've got Blazers game day starting at 4.30. Uh, Portland is in Sacramento tonight, so we got to match up with the Kings and Blazers. Tip-off will be at 7. So I'll have game day from 4.30 until 6 before we kick it over to the Trailblazers. Uh, the one interesting part about the game tonight, uh, Blazers rookie Chris Murray will have a chance to play in his first game. Hopefully he'll get on the court against his brother Keegan Murray. And I know they'll have a lot of family members down there. And you know, Dwight and I spoke with him at media day, and that's something that I know he and the family are definitely excited about. So uh, something to keep an eye on tonight. Uh, no Scoot Henderson. He's going to uh, be out of the game tonight as he continues to recoup from the uh, uh, right ankle sprain. I'm surprised he's not going to go tonight because um, from what I was told, it was not a serious uh, ankle injury, but, you know, the good thing about the Blazers right now is that there's no pressure to uh, have anyone on the floor. They don't have to rush anyone back. Uh, they can take their time and make sure that everyone is safe and healthy uh, because they're in a rebuild and they're trying to focus on player development and getting other guys a chance to play and see what they can do. So uh, tip-off is coming up tonight at 7 o'clock. And you can join me uh, following the game for fifth quarter, uh, as always. And don't forget, just yesterday we started it uh, all of our local shows now, Rip City Mornings with Justin Myers, uh, Rip City Drive with Dwight and Chad, Blazers Game Day, Fifth Quarter, and Courtside Mondays with Chris Burkhart, uh, all streaming on YouTube. So all you have to do is go to YouTube.com. Uh, you can pull up our homepage, which is Rip City Radio 620, and uh, click and subscribe, and that's where you're going to find uh, all of our live links for the shows. And, of course, if you... Uh, need to podcast or listen, you can go to YouTube and they'll be there on our homepage where you can always pull up the shows uh, uh, in their full length and be able to watch that way. So a uh, good opportunity for you. Uh, and we're excited to be able to provide different ways for you to interact and listen. Um, and I think YouTube is great. Heck, I, I looked at my numbers. I, I spend way too much time on YouTube and I assume that I'm not the only person out there that's doing that. So, uh, uh, and we got the chat open. So if you want to uh, comment on uh, how ignorant I am or anything else about the sports world or what's going on in Portland, uh, you can take part in the YouTube chat, which is cool. So a couple of thoughts that I have uh, today. Oh, by the way, too, Ben Golliver, Washington Post, uh, no stranger to Portland. He's going to join the Rip City Drive today at 320. So we'll get a chance to talk a little NBA with him, which, uh, which is always nice because Ben is one of the best, super sharp, and we love talking ball with him. He'll be on today, Rip City Drive with Dwight and Chad at 320. Uh, college football playoff rankings came out yesterday. Um, as we thought, no major changes. In fact, the top six remain the same. I don't have an issue with that uh, because uh, these teams are going to start playing games that matter against better competition. And so we're going to see some separation, get more clarity as things continue to move on. In fact, that could happen this weekend. So we know that Ohio State's number one, uh, probably on the basis of the, the strength of their wins over Penn State and at Notre Dame. Uh, Georgia's number two, uh, not as dominant as they have been, but a uh, big one over Missouri over the weekend. Uh, and, of course, a lot of talent, great defense, great coaching. Uh, you got to like the Bulldogs, and they won back-to-back -back national championships. Uh, Michigan at number three. The, the best thing I can say about Michigan is, look, th their schedule has been weak. They haven't played anyone yet. Uh, that's going to change this weekend. But they've dominated competition, and they've looked great in doing so. Florida State at number four. I guess my only gripe with the committee would be uh, Florida State at four. They're unbeaten, but Washington's got a more quality win with their victory over Oregon, I would have Washington at four, Florida State five, Oregon right there at six. So I would keep the Ducks as, um, you know, one of the first two teams out, although I think that they're one of the top four teams in the country just based on play. If you watch the games, you see them talent-wise, the way they've dominated the play of Bo Nix and the balance they have on both sides of the ball. I think the Ducks are one of the best teams. But, again, it doesn't matter because they're going to have a chance to move up with the games that are in front of them. In fact, uh, games coming up this weekend, USC at Oregon, Utah at Washington, Michigan at Penn State. That's going to be great. Miami's at Florida State. Ole Miss at Georgia. So those are the games. We'll see how it plays out. But we're starting to get into that part of the schedule where some of these top teams could take a loss. So keep an eye on that. Uh, the one thing that's interesting, uh, Oregon opened up against USC at Odson is a 15-point favorite. I think the line is going up. I've seen it as high as 16 and a half. Here's the question I have. Dwight and I were talking about this yesterday. Could USC get a one-game coach bump with the firing of Alex Grinch. Now they got two of their assistants who are going to handle the defensive side of the ball. That's what I want to see. Uh, how much help could it make if they're lined up better, they have better gap integrity, and they're thinking less and reacting more? Can they simplify things to where their athletes can do more?
defensively to maybe get a couple of stops. The one thing that would scare me if I'm a better and I'm on the Oregon side, this is one of those weird games where I haven't talked to anyone on the planet that thinks that USC's got a, a, a chance in H-E double hockey sticks to get the win. And it's one of those games where it's, it's not just Oregon's going to win, but they're going to dominate. They're going to put up 800 yards of total offense in the first half. They can kill them every which way. I mean, that's kind of what my brain tells me, too, based on what I've seen from the Trojans' defense. But a lot of times what you see when everyone thinks it's going to go one way, it could go the opposite direction. So I guess what I'm saying is I, I, I believe Oregon's going to win, no doubt. But I'm starting to think that it might be a little bit closer than the 16-and-a-half point spread. And it's not like they're going up against some bum quarterback, right? They've got Caleb Williams on the other side. They can score. So just something to think about if you're looking at wagering on that football game. I'm, I'm starting to lean USC to cover the spread. I do like the Ducks to win. Um, I just don't like it when I hear everyone and their mom saying that this team's going to dominate and do this and do that. It, it just feels like there's a tidal wave going in one direction. And well, a lot of times when that happens in the gambling world, it goes the other or opposite way where the public gets their face kicked in. It happens all the time. Uh, elsewhere, uh, the Trailblazers, uh, I mean, we're going to continue to talk about this. Anthony Simons will be back in about a month, you know, four to five weeks. Uh, he's got the uh, thumb injury, had surgery. Uh, Scoot Henderson is out right now uh, with a ankle sprain. But at some point, they're all going to be back. And there's a lot of talk about what they should do with the starting lineup. You got to start the, the young guys, Ant, Shaden, and Scoot. They all three need to be on the floor. Uh, I want the guys to play. I'm a big believer that playing time and starting and going up against the best, that type of experience is the best thing for development. And what we're talking about here is like these people that, that uh, it's funny to me. You, you get a guy taking number three overall. And it's like, oh, he's got to earn his minutes. Th that rarely happens when someone's taken that high, especially on a team that's in a full rebuild. This team's not trying to win games and make the playoffs. That's not their destiny this year. It's about player development and continuing to utilize the, the veterans you have to look at possible deals to retool uh, your roster, uh, get more draft picks, uh, get young players to continue to uh, reshape the roster and the image that you want. And the best way to do that, the best thing for this franchise is to get Scoot and Shaden up to speed as quickly as possible to make sure that that takes place. So I'm playing Scoot, I'm playing Ant, and I'm playing Shaden. And look, I know that Shaden's at a disadvantage being on the floor with Ant, trying to find his spot, uh, defending other threes. Can he do it? Look, I, I, I don't know. But I know that him being on the floor and learning the game and, and competing is going to be the best thing for him. And what we're talking about here is like, okay, you don't want to start shading. So what, you're going to throw Tamani Kamara at the three? Or Matisse Thibel? How's that better for the team to have those guys on the floor who are role players at best? I think Tamani could develop into a starter, but, you know, he needs time too. So I'm starting the, the, the three guys that matter most. And that's just how I'm going to roll. And I want those guys to get experience. And then, and then you want... Scoot and Shane to develop as quickly as possible so the Blazers are faced with a tough choice moving into the future um, with what they're going to do with Ant long term. And I think anyone that thinks that Scoot should come off the bench, I think you're crazy, all right? That's just how I'm going to say it. You're crazy. you got to play Scoot. He doesn't need to earn minutes. Get his ass on the floor and play him. He's very confident. He's got a lot of ability. And I think once he plays and continues to get minutes, we're going to see him continue to skyrocket. The game will slow down. He'll develop a better understanding. I think the shooting is going to take time. But in terms of his passing, his playmaking, and learning how to run an offense, the best way for him to do that, the best way for him to get up to speed is to be playing with the starters up against other NBA starters, you know, some of the elite guys in the league, and that'll get him the education he needs. And plus, I have confidence that Billups is going to do that because he's shown a willingness to play the young guys. So I hope that's the direction they go. I know a lot of you disagree, and that's fine, but – I'm starting the youngsters. I want Scoot in the starting lineup. I do want to read this uh, tweet. It's a little bit bizarre, but LeBron James, you know, I, I respect LeBron for the duration of his career. He's obviously one of the greatest basketball players of all time, but I just think he's a fraud. A lot of people wonder why I have such an issue with LeBron. I just think he's a fraud. Great basketball player, one of the all-time greats, but he, he's always doing things and saying things that would lead me to believe he's insecure, and I don't know why. It's one of those dominant players of all time. So this uh, site, uh, Legion Hoops, they're on Twitter at Legion Hoops or X. They put out a tweet saying, LeBron says he'd still be just as dominant if he never went to Miami and, to play with the Heat. And that was per Anthony Chang. Uh, LeBron tagged that tweet and responded and said, you're damn right. I would still be. 
I'm chosen. Ain't nothing changing that. Maybe less rings, but dominant from start to finish. I've never seen a superstar on this level try so hard to convince everyone how great he is. Um, it just kind of turns my stomach because great players, the great, uh, the best of all time in all sports, you know, the one thing they have in common is that they don't go around trying to tell you how great they are. They let other people uh, talk about their legacy and, and, and share that narrative. MJ wasn't like that. Kobe wasn't like that. Uh, Joe Montana never talked about himself. Even Tom Brady, who drives me crazy because the Patriots were a big-time rival of the Broncos for years, he never did that. He let other people s- to share that. So it's not going to change. That's LeBron. His fans are, are going to love him regardless. But this will be a prime example. It's just cringeworthy. It's like, come on, man. Well, why are you trying so hard to tell us how great you are? We know. I watch the games. You've been at a high level for 20-plus years. You don't need to go around telling people how great you are. It's bizarre. It's really weird. I, I don't understand it, so I just wish it would stop. Um, but this is one of the latest examples of LeBron being very weird, uh, like that Instagram post he had where he wrote a letter to himself. Who does that? I guess LeBron does, but very strange. Uh, elsewhere, uh, one other thought I had, uh, Jim Harbaugh, in this investigation in Michigan, um, Connor Stallions, who is uh, the no- most notorious man in college football right now, look, do I think Michigan was cheating? Uh, do I think they sent advanced scouts to games to use electronic equipment? Yeah, I do. Uh, was Jim Harbaugh aware? I don't know. I have a tendency to think that he probably was because these coaches are control freaks. And, they, and if, they wa- if he wasn't aware, then he should be aware because he's the highest paid guy in the state. And his job is to have control over the program. But I will say this. The idea that somehow the Big Ten is going to step in and, and place punishment on Michigan or Harbaugh in some fashion before the investigation is over I'm not a big fan of that because what you have is a bunch of people from Ohio State and all these other schools in the Big Ten who are crying. They're crying foul, and I'm not going to believe what they say because they hate Michigan. It's a rival, right? And they're dominating the conference. So what I want to have happen here is let the investigation play out, and then once they have all the facts, all the details, then they can administer punishment if it is warranted. But to do so before due process takes place, big fan of that i don't like people being punished with allegations i think people should be entitled to due process i want investigations to be finished and i think what happens is is that when you make decisions before the investigation's over or before due process takes place you're entering into a very slippery slope and i don't think that's the way to do it so um and the reality is with the players they have at michigan right now and they could break the record for the number of players to enter into the nfl in one draft uh they're dominant and he's doing a heck of a job. I think a lot of this is jealousy. I think it's a witch hunt. And the people who are pointing the finger and throwing out allegations, be careful because they're cheating too. And when you go down in that direction, at some point, it's going to come back and bite you. And I, I, Michigan might be going a little bit more over the top than other schools, but I just work off a simple assumption when it comes to professional athletes, when it comes to top 25 college sports. Uh, I just assume everyone's cheating. So when I find out that they are, I'm not stunned by it. Uh, the stakes are too high. The money is too big. You've got to work off that assumption. So before you go and start pointing the finger, be careful because if you're doing the same thing and you're dirty, it, it could come back to bite you, and you got to watch out for that. All right, Rip City Drive, 3 until 4.30, Ben Golliver at 3.20, and be sure to go to YouTube.com. Uh, go to our homepage, Rip City Radio 620. Subscribe, and you can join us in studio via the live stream uh, from YouTube. And then I've got Blazers Game Day. From 4.30 until 6, Trailblazers at the Kings tonight, tip-off at 7, and it's all here in your home of the Blazers, 620 Rip City Radio.